Hey guys, Boz here. I wanted to do a video to cover a topic that I've been asked a lot over the years, and that is why do you use Linux and what do you use it for? Um, and I'm not going to be able to get into a ton of detail on this subject, but I wanted to show you a way you could play with Linux in a less uh, intrusive way and possibly if you're younger and your parents don't want to let you like reformat a hard drive or repartition a hard drive or you know mess too much with your computer and you have a Windows machine or even an OS 10 uh, based Mac and you want to play with Linux this will be an easy way for you to do it so the first question I think people are gonna be asking is what is Linux this is linux.org's website which is not the greatest to give you a history of Linux uh, but Linux was a uh, kernel to make a Unix based kind of kernel for an operating system and it was made by Linus Torvalds and uh, he created it and he had he made it open source so people could help and you started seeing people use a lot of the, his kernel and they took the free software foundation who made a lot of different like utilities for like compilers editors and different things and with that they made a nice uh, Linux based Unix distribution. Now back then it was very command line based and even when they started adding graphical user interfaces it wasn't as powerful say as Windows at the time um, or eventually when the Mac OS 10 operating system came out they actually took VSD which is a Unix uh, like kernel and they put OS 10 on top of that so you know you have a Unix based core on your OS 10 machines and obviously Linux does. Linux is very popular. You probably aren't even aware like the Android phones run on Linux kernels. Uh, your appliances probably have Linux in them if they're very smart. Um, your TiVo, if you have a TiVo, a lot of the DVRs uh, use uh, Linux. Uh, it's everywhere. You're seeing Steam uh, Valve using uh, the Linux on the Steam OS. And the nice thing about Linux is it's free. Uh, it works really well on lower end hardware so if your parents have an older computer say an old laptop an old desktop uh, and you can uh, have it from them you can install Linux on it and get rid of like the old Windows XP Windows 7 that might be on it and really bring new life to it but a lot of you can't do that you either don't have extra computers uh, you can't take uh, and boot a CD off of your computer your parents won't let you um, do any like repartitioning of your hard drive so you can boot Windows and boot Linux. So how can you play with Linux? Well, we're going to be using a program called VMware Workstation Player. Now it is free. There is a commercial version and if you're going to do anything for profit you need the commercial version. But if you're going to just be playing with it at home, this is perfectly fine. Doesn't work on Mac. If you have Mac OS X, or if you want to, you can use VirtualBox, which is 100% free. Uh, and you can download versions of it if you go to the download tab. They have uh, a Windows version, OS 10, and even Linux versions. Now these are called the host versions. You download, if you're downloading one of these, you download the host of what type of computer you're running on. This is a Windows machine, so I would download the Windows host. But then that VirtualBox Windows host would let me run clients like Linux, other versions of Windows, or whatever. But we're going to use VMware Workstation. You would basically download it if you're like me with a 64-bit Windows system. You would hit this download, download it, install it. Now, um, if you want to know what version of Linux we're going to use for this test, we're going to use Linux Mint. I really like it. We're going to install Linux Mint. I already did the download, so we're done there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run VMware Player. It, the setup's pretty in, uh, basic on it. You just run it, um, go through a few things. If your parents are needed to install software, you may have to have them do it. Uh, there is a couple drivers it installs for network and different than USB. So you will have to restart your computer possibly after the install of this and after an uninstall if you would uninstall it. Uh, once you've got it created, you can see virtual machines that you have. Now, I don't really use the workstation player uh, this on this system, I, so I've got a few things I've played with on here. I mainly use it on my development systems, uh, and I don't use the player. Uh, but we're going to show you guys the player. So let's create a new virtual machine. So when you first do this, it's going to ask you uh, what installer disk are you going to use? Well, we're going to go here to my downloads and do the 18.1 version of Linux Mint. 
Now there's a ton of great Linux distros out there. You might like uh, Ubuntu, very popular. You might like Fedora, which is uh, sponsored by the Red Hat uh, company. You might like um, SUSE Linux or SUSE, however it's pronounced Linux. Uh, you might want to try uh, Debian, which things like Ubuntu and even Mint here kind of use at a core. Um, and there's also lots of other variations out there. They're all free, so you can play with them, and this is a great way to play with them without doing any damage. So we've selected the install disk, we've, we've downloaded. Now normally you would download this ISO image and burn it to a DVD, and then you'd boot your computer with that, and you could then install it on the computer, or just use it in a test mode, where you don't have to even boot anything. These are great uh, ISO images to download and burn to a DVD or a memory stick, in case your computer ever dies. If your Windows system won't boot, you can boot from the uh, CD or memory stick, assuming your computer supports said booting, and boots up into a temporary kind of like CD-based version of Linux with a graphical user interface and all that. You can browse to your hard drive. You could like stick another memory stick in a different USB slot and copy files off of that computer. It's a great way to get files off of a computer that won't boot before you reformat it. And we'll see a little bit of that in, in a bit, but we've selected our our installer. We're gonna it wants to know like what it is. We're gonna say it's Linux Ubuntu 64-bit. This really doesn't matter too much. A lot of times it'll detect it, um, but it doesn't know what uh, Linux Mint is. And we're gonna just give it a name here, and we're gonna call it Linux Mint. Now this location, this is where it's gonna store the virtual. OS. That, has, that is a various number of files. The most important thing is like the configuration of your virtual machine and the virtual hard drive. I mean, any computer needs basically a storage device to boot from, and your Linux virtual machine is no different. But what this is going to do is it creates a single file or multiple files, depending on how you set it, that is your hard drive for that virtual image. So it doesn't actually modify your current hard drive, like repartition it, but it does create a file on it. So we're going to hit next. And here you can see it's wanting to know how big we want to make that that virtual disk. Uh, we're going to leave it at the 20 gigabyte default. Uh, if you were going to be using Linux a lot, that may not be enough. Like if you're going to always be booting it and doing a lot of stuff, but it's probably more than more than enough for anybody. And it wants to know if you want to store it as a single file or multiple. I like storing it just as a single file. Multiple is nice if you're going to like copy it to memory sticks or, or other file systems that don't support like files bigger, bigger than like take two gigabytes or something. Um, I don't like it. It's better and it's faster to do it this way. So here we have the configuration of our hardware. Now this is kind of like what kind of computer we want to virtually have run Linux Mint. We're going to customize it a bit. You can see right now it says we'll let you have one gigabyte. This is a 16 gigabyte machine. Uh, I'm going to give four gigabytes of that to this virtual machine. Processor wise, I've got, you know, six billion processors. I, I don't, but I got plenty. So we're going to give four cores to uh, Linux Mint. This is the CD that we're booting that we already installed. Network address translation here for the network adapter. You can leave it at that. Um, I'm going to change it because I like bridged and I like to replicate my physical network state. You can click this and, and make sure that it's selecting your Ethernet adapter or your wireless. Uh, by using bridged, when I run this virtual machine, it'll be on the same network as all my other computers. If you do NAT, it's almost like not only do you have your, your cable modem or your DSL or your fiber or whatever and a router modem there that gives all your computers a uh, IP on like a private network. If you do NAT, you're going to have, in a sense, like a virtual router in this virtual machine that gives you a, another kind of different public IP, in a sense, just for your virtual machine. I don't like that setting, but for you guys, it's probably fine, and I wouldn't change it unless you know what you're doing. USB controller is fine. Sound comes to sound. We don't have a printer hooked up because we don't care. Uh, we're going to hit close, and we are good to go. You can play with some of those settings. Just make sure you know what you're doing, and we're going to hit finish. So we are good to go now. We have Linux Mint. We're going to hit play, and this is going to start to boot from that virtual uh, CD or that ISO CD image in our virtual machine. You can see it says Linux Mint, automatic boot, and four, three, it's counting down. And this is gonna, I mean, this is gonna think of this little window as like a monitor 
like it's a virtual monitor, almost like you were booting a computer, and this is your, your window into that computer. Uh, but you can see we still have Windows running here. We're still doing our thing. So the disk image of the ISO is loading up, and pretty quickly here, you're going to find out that we are in kind of the the boot the, the CD boot mode of Linux Mint. Almost done. There we are. You can see we are on it. Now this, if this was your Windows system and you boot it from CD uh, off the Linux ISO, you'd be able to access, like you'd see your Windows hard drive and stuff, but obviously we are doing a virtual computer, so we don't have that. But we're gonna go ahead and install it. So we're gonna double click the installer. And it's gonna come up and we're gonna just pretty much go through these defaults. We're gonna say continue. We're gonna install third-party stuff. This means if there's any uh, drivers for Wi-Fi, uh, the Flash, MP3 and stuff, it'll install those for you. Some the They're not free, like Flash and things are not, not open source. So they're they're not, they're free in order to download, but they're not free in openness. So if you don't check this, you won't get them installed. We're gonna go ahead and check it. Really won't matter from the standpoint of this is just for a tutorial, this OS. So we're clicking through that. It's gonna start the process here now of wanting to go partition our virtual hard drive. Now remember, this is just a file on the computer. This is not the actual computer's hard drive, your Windows computer. So it says erase the disk and install Mint. If you were booting from CD and you did this, you would lose your Windows system. But obviously we're booting through virtual, uh, a virtual machine here on VMware Workstation. So this disk is that file that's in that uh, VMware virtual machine folder. So we're going to say erase disk. We're going to let it go. It's going to say, are you sure? We're going to say, yep, we know what we're doing. New York time zone. We like it. That'll work. English. We like that. Our name. Our name is M Hill. Username M Hill. Our password is 12345, which is a great password not. And we're gonna go ahead and have it log in automatically on reboot. Not the most secure password, not the most secure setting. Normally people wanna require a login. So we hit continue and now it's gonna start the installation phase. Now we're gonna skip through this on the video because it, it's gonna take probably about four or five minutes to do, which isn't that long, but long in the, in the case of the video. So we'll come back when this is done. All right, well that finished, and that took about three minutes, four minutes. Um, so you can see it's finished. Now it allows you to continue to play with this like boot up, this like temporary like CD boot of the of the, uh, Linux, but we don't care about that. So we're gonna say restart now. Now this is normally when the computer would restart and it would eject the CD in your, in your actual physical computer. Um, and it's telling you that now, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. Um, I mean, ours is a virtual CD, so it's ejected it. You can see up there, the CD listed is gone now. It's it's still there, but it's not actually mounted. So here you can see we have booted up. Uh, we are in Linux now, it booted that quick. This is a full version, you don't see the CD here anymore. Um, and we are good to go. I'll load Firefox here real quick, just to verify. And let's just go to Google dot com if I can spell it right and you can see we are in Google now you can tell the, the resolution is not the greatest uh, and if you look at it you go well no problem I'll just resize it that doesn't work so I'm going to show you how to get that to work because even if you do full screen you can see it stays minimized you know like that's 640 by 480 this thing that's been down here and for a while and I've kind of ignored it mentions that there's a thing called VMware tools and this helps improve the mouse, uh, your video performance, your video, and then just some other things. And then one of them I'll show you later, but we're gonna hit install tools and let that go. And you can see it brought up basically this uh, thing here. So we've got a file called VMware tools. We're just gonna copy that to our desktop, close this. We're gonna go ahead and eject that because we don't care about it. This is where it gets a little Linuxy, a little a little techy. We're going to click this little command line window here, and we're going to go do a CD desktop, and 
Now, I'll tell you what, let's not do it that way. Let's, we're gonna right click this and we're gonna say open. And this is gonna open that file. And we're gonna grab that folder and we're gonna stick it on the desktop. So we've extracted the files from this. Once this is done, we don't need this anymore. Uh, so we can just right click and say delete. There's ways to get trash cans and different things too, which we might or may not get into in this one. Uh, but now we've got this VMware tools and it's got an installer, but it gets a little tricky here. We're gonna uh, go to the console here by clicking this little command line window and we're gonna say CD desktop. And I hit tab, it typed the word desktop. I hit tabs again and there's only one folder so it automatically typed it for us. And you can see here we have um, a few things, but one of the things we have is this VMware install. Now we need to run that. Uh, much like Windows, you have to have administrator privileges. Um, and in order to run a program that needs to do something like install uh, drivers and stuff, you have to do an SU do, um, which basically kind of uh, become, makes you become, in a sense, SU, I like to call it super user. Uh, but we're gonna type SU do dot slash, and that's a forward slash, and then VMware, and then we're gonna do the install PL. We're gonna hit enter. Now it wants to know our password to verify we are who we say we are. We did one, two, three, four, five. Now it's gonna come up and ask a bunch of stuff. Just hit enter to all of this stuff. Don't worry about anything. Just keep hitting enter for all the defaults. You'll be fine. Just hit enter, enter, enter. All this good stuff. It's gonna basically be building a VMware tools, kind of like kernel image and different things and, and the drivers and everything needed to help VMware run better, you know, on your system. Okay, so it's done. I'm going to hit Control D just to get rid of that window. You could click it. In order for it to work, we need to uh, restart. So we're going to hit Quit Restart. There's a couple other ways to get that to, to go. That's the simplest way. You can see our computer's restarting here, our virtual machine. It's going to boot up very quickly. I mean, you can see it's loading right here. Uh, and literally in seconds here, we have booted in. And we're good to go. Now watch happen, what happens now. I'm going to resize this window. And when I let go, boom, now we got a bigger window. So now we're in Linux. We've got a Linux system. We're playing with it. Here's my uh, Windows system still. You can see it's all running here. But here is Linux. Now, what can you do with it? Well, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. Let's hit the menu. Let's go. You can see they've got to give you a web browser. They give you an internet messenger, a mail client, music player, calculator, terminal, blah, blah, blah. But the beautiful thing about Linux is there's so pretty much almost everything, unless you get into the some of the real high-end professional stuff, everything's free. So we go to the software manager. Wants to know our password. One, two, three, four, five. Because we are cool. And it's gonna load up here and it's gonna give me the ability to install stuff. Now this is how easy it is to install stuff. You can go to websites and download things, but if it's supported here in the software manager, you can install it. So we're gonna go right to games. We're gonna go to board games. Uh, and look at here, here's, it's got them sorted, but all these things you can just click and install them. But we're gonna go for Mahjong, because um, we like it. We're gonna double click it. And it says it's not installed. We're gonna hit install. You can see it's downloading it. We can go back here and we can look at other stuff. I mean, you know, they've got uh, programming tools, editors, uh, integrated development environments. They've got um, graphics packages, office suites, different things, system tools, sound and video edit, sound editors, video editors, different accessories that you might like. Um, a lot of cool stuff. All of it's free that's in here and it's very easy to install. Um, like what we'll do is let's just search uh, for Chrome is called Chromium on Linux But you can see here we'll search we'll double click it. We'll hit install It's gonna install Chromium if we go back here to the menu and we go under um, Applications all applications games you can see the Mahjong we installed just a second ago here it is And boom we are in and we can play Mahjong We'll get rid of that you can see the Chromium browsers installing Chrome's a little bit bigger. This is literally uh, Chrome, if you're a Firefox fan, Chrome, Firefox already installed. Um, you can see some of the basic stuff that they've installed. Um, under games, there was nothing until we installed Mahjong. You can see they got it GIMP, which is basically like a Photoshop. 
Um, there's a scanner, pick, uh, pick organizer. You got the Chromium browser just got installed, so here it is. Um, we just installed that, boom, there's Chromium. That's Chrome, you can log into your Google account like this, share bookmarks between this system and even your Windows systems. Wants to know a password for a key ring, we're just gonna hit continue on that. We're not concerned about security on this virtual image because we're not gonna keep it. Uh, but tons of great software can be installed. Um, so you, you really, you have to like that. Now, maybe you want um, uh, Java. I forget what it's called. It's like Open Java. Um, let me try JDK if that'll work. Yeah, so. Um, So here's a standard Java or Java compatible development kit. So if we click that, it's going to install all of this Java related stuff. We're going to do that because I want to show you one of the things. I wouldn't want to do this in a virtual machine for like for for real um, on a home computer. But we've installed the Java virtual machine. Right, let's go here. And let's go to minecraft.net and let's go to their menu. Let's go to download. Let's download um, our own server. So we want to download their server file. Uh, we're going to save that to disk. It's downloaded. We're going to minimize that. Let's go to a, to a desktop kernel. One of the cool things too I like with this kernel or with this terminal is we can go under the settings and um, We'll go to uh, profile preferences, and if we go under to background, we can set it transparent, and maybe about like that. And you can see now how it's kind of transparent. You can see through the window. All right, so let's go to our desktop, and let's make a directory, and we'll call it um, server. We're gonna go into that server, and we're gonna copy from our uh, downloads folder, the Minecraft file, copy it here. So if you look here, you can see I've got the Minecraft server in there. We're gonna create a file called go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back, oops, I didn't mean to do that. We're gonna go back to this, and we're gonna copy this. Now this example, I think they should fix their website so whatever the latest version is, it shows up here. Because this name should be the same as this name, but this one doesn't have the version number. But we'll be okay with that. Um, minimize that. We're going to hit paste, and there it is. And then we're going to do a 1 point, or 1 point, 1 point 1.2. Is that how it's formatted? I forget how they, how they do that. I think that's right. And we're going to save that. Now, anytime you make a file that you want to have executable, uh, like a text file like that, you want to make an executable or any executable that you create manually, you got to add pl plus X, which makes it, uh, the modifies the attributes to make it ex executable. Don't worry too much about it. But now we've got Minecraft running, or a Minecraft server theoretically we can run. I'm going to do slash go. You're going to see it stop immediately because we don't have the EULA uh, say, uh, are approved. So we have to go back in here and say true. We're running again. And you can see our Minecraft server is starting. Let me just scroll back here real quick. Uh, you can see the, the, you can see the, the uh, port is the default 25565. Our Minecraft server is running. So let's go to our Windows machine and let's run Minecraft. And let's do that. Now, we don't know what the IP of our virtual machine is. And if you did a NAT on the network setup when you installed your uh, virtual machine, if you didn't change it to bridged, this part's not going to work. Let's bring up another terminal window here and let's type IP config. Oop, I have config, get my Windows and Linux mixed up. You can see our 192.168.226 is the IP of this virtual machine. If we go in here, multiplayer, and I think it was 26, wasn't it? Let me hit, put that in, say connect. 
It's logging in, and here you go. If you look over here, let's move this up here. You can see we are logged in on the server, and we are able to start punching trees. And we typed hi, it appears over there. So we're running a um, copy of the Minecraft server that we download it, we're running the server on our virtual machine and connecting to it through our Windows Minecraft, which is really cool. Let's op ourselves because we're cool. So let's opt. You see here it says opt Belvaz, and then I don't need to do it this way, but because we're an op, we can stop the server. And you can see the server stopped. So you can see how easy it was to create a server, download the files. We installed Java with just a click, a couple clicks didn't have to do anything. Uh, you can automatically have things update. Linux is very good about updating things and um, not needing to reboot your computer. Uh, so a lot of great things. I mean, lots of cool stuff. If you're a programmer, um, this is really nice. And I can show you just like a little a thing too here. I type GCC, that's the GNU C compiler. So we actually have a compiler for C also already installed by default here. So if we go to the desktop, let's just make a directory and call it test. And we're gonna go inside there and we're gonna create a C file. And we're gonna do a, temp, a tiny little C program. Um, nothing fancy, nothing uh, that we're gonna get into any detail on what anything means. But we're gonna do the old hello world program. And then we're gonna compile this. I'm gonna do all this through the command line, which we've done, and then I'm gonna run it, and it says, hello world. We just wrote a C program, and then there's the compiled version of that C program. So we can do Java development on here with, with no problem. We can do C development, C++, um, which is GPP. Uh, and you see it even tells you how to install things. Actually, it's GPP which is uh, not installed, but you know, easy, easily installable, but the C compiler is installed. You don't have to install things through the command line either. You can go back to the software manager, uh, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever you put in for your password. And you can install whatever you want. I mean, we talked a little bit about the stuff, but you can see here, we mentioned the internet, they have the web browser. We installed Chromium. They already had Firefox. They have a nice chat program, an internet messenger. Thunderbird Mail, if you don't use, like if you have a pop email server and you're not using something like uh, Google Mail or or Hotmail or Live.com, whatever you want to call it, a BitTorrent FT uh, type program. It's already got the Libre Office Suite, which is pretty much like your Microsoft Office. It's got a CD uh, burner, um, copy, CD burner, DVD burner, media player, VLC media player, which is really good. Rhythm box to organize your music. Uh, and you got some system tools and stuff, but you can go into this this bad boy here. Uh, and I mean, if you're a Super Mario fan, Super Tux, we're gonna double click that bad boy. We're gonna hit install. Let's just see what happens if we try to run a game. All right, so Super Tux is installed. Let's close all this stuff. Let's go under games. You can see it's already listed. Here's Super Tux. Turn off that music. Now it's got a story mode and it's got this really long, annoying intro. Um, I don't believe there's any any way. I don't know if I can do a board. Oh, I can. All right, so here we go. First level, Super Mario. Look out, Super Tux is on the loose. If you like penguins this is the way to go I forgot to hit the space bar this is kind of a tutorial this is a rather old game I did it so you get the idea uh, one other thing I'll show you that's that's it's kind of cool is because we have all these development tools already installed Let's say that you want to compile Spigot. 
the uh, basically the Minecraft bucket. You have to compile it yourself now because of legal issues. So you can go to downloads and you can go to um, the build tools here. And we need to basically download the build tools. So we say, okay, it's downloaded. It. Um, let's go to this more information thing. We don't necessarily need all the information, but we're gonna use it uh, in a second here. We're gonna go back to our desktop. And we could do stuff like this too. We could right click and say create folder and we could say spigot. Um, we could double click that. We could go to our downloads. Um, we could take the big tool, build tools and, and move it over there. We could, we could, you know, delete this because we don't really need it. We already copied it. Um, but we've got our spigot now. And basically, in order to build spigot, you download that file. And we go back um, to our uh, thing here and we go, how do we do this with Linux? Well, one of the first things we need to do is it says uh, you have to have Git and Java installed. I believe that it's already installed, but we need uh, to do, possibly to do the Git. I think it's there. I'm gonna copy just the Git part. I don't need the, we already know we have Java. I'm gonna paste it. And then I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five. And you can say it's already installed, so we're good to go there. Uh, but in order to build, all we have to do is run um, the build tools. Uh, first thing it wants us to do is this command first. Um, we don't want that comma there. Um, we'll hit paste, enter. That's just because Unix and Linux, or Unix, Linux, and Windows store things differently. And then all we have to do is copy this. And we can get rid of that. I'm gonna right click, say paste. And hit enter. And you just have, you have to sit back and wait. This takes a little bit of time, but this actually will build uh, bucket and spigot. I'm gonna let this run and we'll come back when it's done. This takes about five minutes itself, uh, but once it's done, you have a copy of spigot and bucket, the latest up-to-date version. If you wanna update it again, like they've made changes, just come back and run this again. And uh, it will literally recompile it and only really download the changes. So it's quicker the second time, but we're gonna let this finish. All right, so it is done. Uh, how long it took, I don't know. Maybe I'll pop something up on the video to tell you. But you can see it's finished. Now, we're gonna go ahead and just close that. If we go into this spigot thing, here you can see is the latest version of spigot now, built and craft bucket. Now, one of the things we can do, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Because we installed the VMware tools thing that we let us resize the file, it helps with the mouse and stuff and gives you uh, other some other features. One of the features is this. I'm gonna highlight these two files. I'm gonna just click and drag over to my Windows machine, let go. Boom, I just copied those two files to my Windows system from the virtual machine without having to worry about like mounting a, a shared drive uh, or do using some network file protocol, you know, anything. I just clicked and dragged. And now I have those two files ready to go. I don't really care about those two files, but I just gave you an example. So I mean, what have we learned? Well, we've learned how to install Linux on VMware Workstation. It's very similar if you use VirtualBox, uh, but it is gonna be a little bit different. If you're running Windows, you can use VirtualBox if you want. I like VMware Workstation Player. I think you should try it. If you're on a OS 10 machine, obviously VirtualBox is your only option. Don't expect this to be, you can run Windows under virtual um, machines, but don't expect uh, to be able to like load, say Windows uh, 10 on your Mac OS 10, and then play the latest and greatest like Battlefield 1, or some game maybe that you can't play on Windows. You could definitely run older games through emulation, and in some cases, if you got a really, really fast computer, you can run even some of the more newer games. Uh, but, you know, if you've got a Windows machine, you're probably already able to run those games. Uh, so I wouldn't see any benefit to running the games under emulation, unless you're trying to run a, a Linux game that doesn't exist anywhere else. Uh, that Super Tux game uh, is available for Windows and I think Mac OS 10 and, and other platforms. Uh, but hopefully you like it. I mean, if you're the kind of person that likes to dabble, 
Um, if your parents have an older computer, or you do, say it's a laptop and you're like, oh, Windows crawls, it takes four hours to boot. If your family's kind of retired that laptop and it's sitting in a corner or that old desktop, um, and they'll let you play with it, download a image of whatever Linux distro you like. I like this Mint, I think it's pretty friendly. It's very window-like for people, so it's easy to grasp. Put it onto a, burn burn that disc that you or that image you download to a DVD. Uh, or a memory stick using some tools that, that there's lots of videos that show you how to do it I'm not gonna get into it um, boot that on the computer install uh, Linux on it if it's a computer that your parents don't care about anymore like say they're like hey this thing is old it's ancient we don't care um, you can go ahead and just wipe the hard drive and install Linux in the same in the same sense we did here um, if it's a computer that's got files on it they want then you probably shouldn't do it I would play with this emulation using VMware Workstation or VirtualBox. That's a lot of fun. I mean, you saw we installed the tools. We don't need that anymore. Um, you can see we installed a Minecraft server and ran it and connected to it. We compiled a little C program and we built the latest version of Spigot and Bucket all in a very short period of time. And we really didn't have to do a lot. And there's so much more stuff that's available to us. As long as nobody hacks us with our, our basic one, two, three, four, five password. I kid. Um, a lot of stuff is already built in. Like you can right-click the desktops and change background. It's going to load all the different backgrounds that it currently has on the system. But you can do this get more backgrounds. The first time you do this, it takes a few seconds. The next time, it won't be as crazy. I like that one. I think that's kind of cool. We'll go with that. Um, but lots of really good stuff. Graphics, I think Inks, the GIMPs aren't installed, but Inkscape, I use that to do a lot of my thumbnails. There is a version of Inkscape for Windows. There's Blender. Um, you know, if we go over here to sound and video, uh, I've already got the VLC player installed. Um, but you can see that there's Audacity, which I use for editing audio files. Uh, these are, Audacious is a great little music player, um, kind of uh, Winamp related. OpenShot, good for editing videos. Cheese is a program that's much like Photo Booth on the uh, Mac 10, where you, OS 10, where you can like make crazy pictures with your webcams. Um, lots of great little utilities. Um, let's see, I was going to show you something, but I mean, just to show you how how feasible the, the uh, system is. I mean, let's go to Chromium and let's go to Twitch. TV Hill Software, because that's me. And let's look at my videos. And here we can see there was a Minecraft stream. And let's just see if we can play a uh, a video. All right, so we had to skip the uh, Twitch advertisement that played. Uh, but here you can see, I mean, I've got um, my live stream. You know, here it is. I've cranked the quality up, the source quality. We'll let that update. This should get clear. And you can see, you can see the source quality is set, and we are virtually running Linux operating system that is watching my live stream past broadcast, and it's it's basically I full screened it here in the virtual machine, but this is my live stream. We can jump around in it. Uh, this was the UHC that we did. So, I mean, you can see it's very cool. Um, you can do anything, uh, but it, Linux is one of the nice things about Linux, and it's also true about like OS 10. Viruses are pretty non-existent. There might be a few out there. You hear like everybody scream, "Oh, there's a new Linux virus," or "There's an OS 10 virus." Um, they're pretty, pretty much more a myth than they are anything. There are some proof of concepts, but for the most part, you don't really see them. Uh, because if you're going to develop hacks or viruses, you're going to want to target the Windows machines because that's predominantly what's out there. You're not going to get a lot of bang for your buck trying to hack Linux systems because they just don't. Have, there's not that many Windows or Linux machines and uh, OS 10 machines compared to Windows. Uh, so they're great OS to put on. Like this is a great OS to put on a computer, say for a grandparent or for somebody in your family who's not very tech savvy, who you're always having to support them uh, because they can't do a lot of damage to it. You don't have to tell them the password for like, um, you can create another user account 
and you could leave the main password, set it not to log in by default or have it log in as them, but don't let them have permission to install software. Um, and even if you do, it's, it's not like they can really do a, easily do a lot of dangerous stuff. But it's a great system. So hopefully you guys like it. If you want more tech videos like this showing you some different things, more detail on some of the stuff that maybe I flew through on here, let me know. Hope you enjoy it. Um, but here, I'll show you as we go. I'll show you the shutdown. But thanks for watching. We're going to hit start menu, quit, shutdown. We'll see you guys later as our virtual machine shuts down. Nighty night, virtual machine. And poof.